gentlemen, welcome aboard this live launch with Hunky Dory TV. The crafting captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign and we are now cleared for takeoff. In preparation for launch, please ensure all of your troubles and worries are properly stowed. You won't be needing those today. Our flight time will be a craft filled 60 minutes or more and the Hunky Dory crew are now ready for departure. At this time we ask you to sit back, relax and enjoy our video presentation. Live launch takeoff in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have live launch liftoff. Hello and welcome to Air Hunky Dory. Um, I am your flight assistant, I presume. I presume so. I, presume. Um, I just turn up on the day and see what happens. Um, so I will be helping you along this live launch today, but I am not alone. We have the very wonderful, the very beautiful, it's Natalie. Yay! She's back! I'm back! I don't have to do any crazy gluing. Oh, you do. I'm definitely making <laughs> you do that again. They were really good, Stacey. We were actually, because um, we were lazy, and um, we were having a few days off to celebrate my dad's birthday, um, we, were still, <laughs> we were still in bed. We were still in bed watching, um, commenting. So I those saw comments, your comments. Um, yeah. Commenting from, from all, mainly because we were staying in, um, we were staying in a static caravan up in the lakes and it was freezing. And neither imagine. of us wanted to go up to put the heating on. Neither of us wanted to go up to make brews. So it was kind of like a standoff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won um, because Dan got up first. Um, but yeah, it was about 11 o'clock when we got out of bed. A very lazy, very lazy morning, but it was brilliant. That, that's a good that's a good holiday that when you've had a lie in. Yeah. Needed okay, it. so a few announcements before our departure. Um your pick it pick it. Pick it. Pick it. Um your pick of the week. We went through it yesterday. It's the flourishing florals decollage. Um grab yours now um, while it's still available. Um and finally the Moonstone Dye offers that we did yesterday. They will be running until Friday the 15th of October at 8 a.m. Yeah. Um, so grab yours now. So we do also have a Win It Weekly competition. So take a look at this. Hi. I wasn't prepared for how short that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now sit back, relax, and let's take a look at our brand new launch. We're not doing the competition question. Oh, we're doing the, oh, see. Ha, 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 ha. That was funny. I need, I need more instructions on this. It says, we'll do a win do it weekly this. competition. However, we won't <laughs> tell you how to win it. <laughs> Let's do a competition, but don't worry, oh. you cannot enter this one. You know, we Not haven't all been on holiday, Natalie. That was hilarious. Some of us have I had to that. stay here and pick up the glue and get on with it, okay? Oh. <laughs> okay, so if you would like to win um, <laughs> anything this week, um, finish the catchphrase. Don't cry over spilt, and it's, it's A, glue, B, wine, or C, milk. Um, I know that lots of people have commented um, already, but get your um, answers in. I liked like, how Kelly share. said, go on, sorry. I liked how Kelly said that she'd cry over any of those. Um, <laughs> oh, she absolutely would. She would. Her have you seen her house? Oh, it's it's like a, I don't it's, think like, it's like a cat, it's actually an Instagram house. It is. It is, it is so beautiful. I'm not sure there's a speck of dust in that house. No, never. Um, whereas, never anything out of the way. Every now and again, we have little tumbleweed dust things just oh there's yeah. one there's one flying by just wave at it don't actually do anything <laughs> <laughs> okay so if you would like to win that you um you can win this luxury true blue luxury topper collection it always it, you know me by now it always <laughs> takes me like a couple of minutes to warm up blah, 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 blah. so <laughs> <laughs> so Finish the catchphrase, don't cry over spilt 
what? Like, share and comment. Um, and while you do that, take a look at this video that was supposed to be a minute ago. <laughs> How absolutely stunning were those cards. I absolutely love these dies. And looking at how well they went on TV, you guys do too. So these are launching with us today um, on Hunky Dory website. Um, these are our Stitch It collection. So today's show um, might be a bit longer because we're going to show you some techniques. We're going to yeah. show you some demos. There's loads going on today um so go and get a brew um and we will go through these dies so the first die set is um trim a tag that we'll look at today um so you get uh, various dies with this um you get three tags in total but you get additional dies let me find the actual packaging um you get additional dies so then you can turn it around so you can see that all these are individual dies. So you can mix and match. You can create plain tags. You can create um, more detailed tags. You can mix and match. You can cut into cards rather than using them as tags. So yep. You've got little mini sort of canvases. But the main idea with this collection is that you have that grid available for you to start stitching your own designs into. So the holes are approximately two millimeters in size, which allows you to use um, like embroidery floss, wool, um, twine. twine. I, there isn't much that we haven't tried. You can try um, metal, like the thin metal coil, uh, what's it called? Wire, yeah. metal wire, um, glitter, um, threads. You can use, like you said, you can use wools. We have, we have tried everything. You can use the really thin two millimeter ribbons as well. And that looks really, really uh, effective when you use that. There's absolutely loads of things you can use here. And please don't look at these and think, oh my God, what do I do with these? Like what, what designs am I gonna do? We are going to give you lots of inspiration throughout the show. Definitely. So that is your first one. We're gonna fly through these because I know that they just look like lots of dots at the moment, but when you see the card, you will see mm -hmm. how stunning these will be. So this is Follow Your Heart. So you get lots of dies with this. You get seven dies in total, which allows you to make this heart topper. So if I turn this around again, you get three dies that make up that large heart topper. You get the outside scallop edge, you've got an inner um, sort of dotty outline, and then you've got the center detail panel. So you can see on this board how you can mix and match so you can create the full topper using all three dies. This is using two of the dies, or you can simply cut in to a card using the inner detail die. Also on there, you have the, um, the individual heart. You have the little mini tag in the center, um, the heart, I mean, not tag, mm -hmm. heart, which um, once you've stitched into you can then layer it onto your little mini scalloped heart and you've got your sentiment which says you're so lovely. I love that. So I'm literally flying through these today. Oh these ones oh, are upside down. Safe. Both upside down. Oh no there's all sorts. Okay we're getting there slowly. Um, okay so these two are two separate die sets. Um, You've got Ada Edges and Creative Canvas. So if I show you the Creative Canvas first, that's our larger die, um, which looks like this in the packaging. So you have the outside cut edge, which is five by five inches, and then you have the grid. So you can use these together to create the panel, or you can use them, um, use the grid on its own to cut into a card, but 
the absolutely fabulous thing with this is that you can also make it bigger. You can. Um, so Natalie has already done some, little some examples. examples. So grab. I don't think I've got a piece of card. Stay on this. Um, so you can see that that grid has been cut into a piece of card and it hasn't been used with the outside die, which then allows you to create a larger canvas. So this, you can make it as large as your die cutting machine will allow. Um, so you can create fabulous um, frames with this. We've got a fabulous frame that I can show you in a second. Um, but the, uh, the amazing thing with this um, is that you can create canvases out of whatever colour, whatever medium you want. So you mm -hmm. can ink, you can stamp into this before you cut into it. Um, you know, create patterned papers. I mean, when you're actually sewing, it's very hard to sew onto already patterned paper. So yeah. you, can, you can get really, really creative with this. And the other thing when we were designing this is I love cross stitch, but it, I just can't do it because it makes my eyes go really, really funny and gives me headaches um, just because the holes are so small. So with this, we wanted to make it as easy as possible. So those holes are a really good size, evenly spaced. So then if you have problems maybe with your eyesight or, you know, with your yeah, dexterity you problems, yeah. or if you want to give this to the, to the kids, yes, it's, it's perfect. perfect. If you've got those plastic needles, they can get involved in this. Um, it really is an amazing die set for all ages. We've had children involved and then yeah. we've had, I mean, my nan got in touch and said, what are these dies? They are amazing. And she's not a crafter. So honestly, I can't, I can't love these more. I know, they're so much fun. They really are. And they're so, like you say, they're so versatile for so many different age ranges, so many different abilities. You don't have to be um, an amazing sewer or um, you don't have to be amazing at cross stitch or embroidery. This is sort of like a starter um, for all different ages, all different um, people's abilities. And we've also designed, which we're going to go through with you in just a short while, um, a guide to help those people who are beginners in this. Um, maybe to help those people who haven't cross stitched for a while and need a little bit of a refresher. Um, but there, we've got that sort of guide that step by step to help you along your journey so whether you're interested in this but you're thinking you know what maybe this is a bit too advanced for me maybe um, I should just stick to I'll just stick to my my kits and my paper craft kits and I'll just stay there no you can do this anyone can do this um, it's so much fun it's so therapeutic and um, honestly it makes you it makes you feel so happy when you finish doing it as well so it is the perfect, perfect thing for people who want to mix their, um, their crafts together. Um, the perfect f thing for someone who's new to crafting, someone who's new to die cutting but likes to make um, cards as well. It's great for that. Um, so it's, it is a really good, sort of like all-inclusive kit, this one. I love it. And the amount of ideas. We just, um, the, we just have too many. I was blown away with some of the card samples the team have done an absolutely amazing job um better than i could have ever imagined it's um, been really good i can't wait to show you some of the cards um so let's quickly go through the final few dies so this one is ada edges so these are a mix of um dies let me show you because it's very difficult to sometimes see what i'm actually talking about without showing you so you have um, in the far, this one is one long strip and that has been designed to work with your five by five cards. So it will fit nicely within. So you can see next to that five by five panel, how nicely that will fit down an edge of your five by five card. However, we have made other cards which has longer. So Natalie's made this where the, she's tiled this and made it longer. So that is a beautiful one just on its own. It's so pretty. The centre is a sort of an array of different swirls. So you can use these all together to make one big flourish. 
or you can use them individually as corners, borders. Um, you can, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, you can use it with your butterflies as trails. So Natalie's just thrown this across the room. <laughs> um, so you can see how all these swirls have been used separately to create a background and then stitched into with your butterflies. So that is absolutely gorgeous. And then the final one um, over here, I'm going to do it the right way. Um, this one is actually upside down in the packaging. Um, but these are hearts. So if I turn it around so you can see them the right way around. Um, on this, this side, really hard trying to I do know, left, it's right, so up and down. It? So hard. So going back to the die cuts, you can see them a bit clearer here. Um, you can see these hearts. So they've all got dots all the way around to create that shape. But then you've also got the center dot in the middle. This just allows you to, um, so you can go from the outside in, you can just cover that and stitch all the way around, just ignore it all together. Um, so there's loads of different options with these borders. And then finally, oh, is our um, fantastic flutter buys. So again, the same concept as the heart. You get various dies, so you can create a full top like this. This is using all four dies because you get the outside cut die, you get the inner sort of outline with the dots, and then you get two wing panels as well. So if you really wanted to, you could just have one wing panel that's got detail in and maybe add stamps to the other side of the wing. This one has used the outside die and then the inner sort of outline dots. And then this one here has just used the outside, the inner outside dots and then the two detail panels. And then in the set, you also get the uh, silhouette butterflies and the you give me butterflies sentiment. It's a very cute sentiment, Stace. So that is the full collection of Stitch It Dies. Um, what am I going to do next? Oh, there you go. So that's what I was looking for. Full, full collection, multiply. All five um, Stitch It Dies um, are 49.95. That's saving £15. I know. That's an amazing price. It's such um, a good price. And because, you know, you need... You don't need them all, but you do need them all. Mm -hmm. um, the multi-buy is the best way to get these dies. Because once you've got one of them, you'll be like, oh, I wish I got that one. Or, or what, th that would have worked really well when I was making this card. Um, so the multi-buy is always the best way to get it. And you will you will want all of these dies because it is so, it's so much fun to do. It really, really is. Okay, so next up... Um, we are going to look at the Stitch It Guide. So if you head to our website, wonkydorycrafts.co.uk, that is where you'll find all the die sets for you that is available. But you will also find on our hub and I think on the product page itself as well, um, you'll find our free downloadable Stitch It Guide. So this is something that we've printed in-house. So this is how it will exactly look when you print it. Um, you can save ink and obviously print it in black and white if you would prefer. But this just gives you a starting point. This is absolutely vital um, education for you and a great starting point if, if you're not sure. But it also includes some really advanced um, sort of projects in the back as well. So we're going to go through this um, in depth today. So you can come back to this, look at it. Um, when you get your dies, follow along. So this just gives you a little bit of an introduction. Um, it also gives you a bit of a list about what you will need. It shows all the dies available. So if you ever just, if you get one maybe today, you have that um, reference for the future. And then just down at the bottom, you will um, see some information about the type of things that we would recommend that you use, um, which is what we've talked about today, which is wool, thread, cotton, um, have a play around with it i mean we might you might have found something that that we haven't tried mm -hmm. so absolutely amazing so the second page i'm going to show you quickly and then we're going to go to natalie so this is your second page in the guide which goes through some really basic stitches so if you've never ever stitched before you don't know how to do basic stitches or maybe you just want to refresh 
um, we have done step by steps with images and numbers so they're really simple to follow and then in this little bubble as well if these are if you've mastered all these we've given you some stitches to go and have a look at um, and see if you can do those so the wonderful Natalie is now going to show us step by step how to do each of those stitches um, we just want to give you as much like a head start on this yeah so you when the dies arrive you already know what you're doing with it you can just go so let's go over to Natalie definitely and I think it's a good way as well of being able to show you just how um, easy this is um, to do because I'm not a I'm not a pro stitcher I'm a person who likes to try all different types of crafts I'm a person who um, gets a cross stitch kit or decides I'm going to knit a scarf one day or make some little, I made some vans for my um, nephew before he was born, um, crocheted some vans, it was my first project, my first crocheted project, so I'm just like, I want to do that um, and I go online, teach myself how to do it and then just start doing it whether I do it right or wrong, it doesn't matter because I have so much fun doing it um, and this is the type of thing that we're, we're doing here, it's not anything crazy so we're going to start off just following um, these stitches so we're starting off with our running stitch um, and this one is really really easy to do so it's just like the most basic sort of stitch that you can do here um, and I'm making sure that I'm pulling my thread I've actually got my hand sort of on the back to stop it from um, tightening up because it did that a lot on telly um, at first so you can see here this is sort of giving you um, that really nice stitched edge, that sort of faux stitching that you would possibly um, want to do if you were sort of trying doing this with a pen on a piece on a project. You could sort of use your um, use your pens to create this sort of fake running stitch on your projects, but you can do this in real life um, by getting these stitcher dies. So that is your running stitch. So you're literally just going up um, up one end through the other one and then you're leaving a gap and going back through so you've got your running stitch then then to do the back stitch I'm going to start off here so let's start off at number two actually we'll start off on our second hole in and we're going to go up through this one then we're going to go back down to number one up to number three again and then back down to two. So it's a back stitch because you are literally going back on yourself every single time. And it creates that um, it creates that nice edge without having the sort of gaps in. So if you want to do, say, you want to create like a really nice pattern, you can do this if you're wanting to edge something. This is also the stitch that you use um, to create our mini alphabet that we have in our um, handbook which is a few um, pages down which we'll show you um, a little bit later on but the running stitch is the way which you do that so that is how we've got the back stitch sorry is the perfect one for your little mini alphabet so you've got um, a running stitch here you've got a back stitch so you go in you're missing one out you're going up and going back every time so you're just completing that the whole way through so we do it one more time so that is the back stitch I think these are the most simple stitches like if you're if you learn how to stitch a school in textiles I don't even know if they do textiles anymore at school um, these are the two most basic stitches that you'll do then we've got a half cross stitch and um, so to do this you need two sort of um, rows of your stitching and we're going to go up through this one, down through that top bit, and then we're going to go down to the bottom underneath that and back up. So then this is just going to create like a nice diagonal um, pattern because you don't have to when you're doing this because this looks quite funky. I know I'm just doing it black and white, but even just having these stitches sort of across here is creating quite a funky background um, here so you could create um, some really funky backgrounds by 
doing these different stitches in different colours. Um, so your half cross stitch is just going through the bottom one, across and up, and then you're back down. Oops. And then across and up. So that's your half cross stitch. To do um, the just to do just the cross stitch, then you're just going back over that. So if we go, we'll start again down here. So you're just going across like you did on your half cross stitch, back down and up. So I know that these are quite simple um, stitches here that we're showing you, but there'll be some people out there that have never done cross stitch before. So this is for those very, very, very early beginners to cross stitching. So we're just going up. It's kind of like a square, like a square dance. Up to the top corner, down, I can't find my whole bit now, down, and then back up again. And then you can do that. If you're cross stitching in a really large space, then you don't want to be doing little cross crosses the whole way. You can do um, you can do this in a different fashion. So we've just got the three large cross stitches there. So if you're just doing one cross at a time, you can do it in this way. However, if you've got a really large area, like if you want to cross stitch this whole panel um, in a fantastic sort of rainbow effect, or you could do this in loads of different, um, an ombre effect, start really dark pink, and you want the whole thing to be cross stitched, which looks really effective. And we've got some fantastic examples of sort of these panels being cross stitched. What you can do is you can do the half cross stitch, which I'm doing the whole, which I'm going to do across here now. So you can do this whole cross stitch down. And then you can go back on yourself. Oops which say I'm doing um, an image or I'm cross stitching one of the icons that you'll find in our guide um, and I need to go across by this many but then I need to go back. What you can do then is go back through um, in exactly the same way um, and go over all of your stitches and this is going to um, help to sort of save your thread um, because you, you're not doing individual crosses all the time, you're going to save some thread. It's also a lot faster. And when you really get into it, um, your stitching, um, then, you know, time flies when you're doing this. The great thing about doing this, what you're doing now, is it makes it look um, much neater as well. Because it they're, does. All, they're all going the same way, as in... All the tops are the same and all yep. the bottoms are the same. Yep. Um, it looks really, really good. So that is sort of like the larger area for the cross stitch. And then the last one that we're going to do, which is really fun, um, and I did this large scale on a project um, that we made on telly on Friday, is our um, chevron stitch. So we've gone up through one. So you need two rows to do this. So we've gone up, we've gone down through the middle piece, and then we're going back up here and we're going to go back down. And then we can go, am I doing this right? Up at one, down at two, up at three, then back down to two. Yep. <laughs> Come up at three. Here we go, see? You have to read it sometimes. I'm like, am I doing this right? I am. Back up at three, down to that fourth point, and then again, just repeating that. So up to the center piece, down to that side, back up through the middle again, down to the point, and you're creating a really funky pattern here. Um, and I love how sort of really creative you can get with this because, you know, you can start making your own stitches up. There is no one, there is no one 
around that is going to say, when you finish something that looks absolutely fabulous, there's no one around that's going to go, oh, you've done that wrong. What, what have you done here? They're going to go, wow, that looks amazing. How have you done that? So they're not going to question what stitch you've used. You can create whatever you want to with this. Um, you don't have to be an amazing stitcher. I'm not an amazing stitcher. I just love it and I love having so much fun and how simple it is to do. So that is how to do the basic stitches that you can find in your guide. But then there is so much more. So let's go back over to Stacy and we'll have a look at what else is in that guide. Thank you, Nat. That, that just seeing it sometimes is, just makes it so much easier. As much as you've got this guide, when you get your dies, you can obviously go back to these videos and follow along with Natalie as well. So um, you've got so much resource here um, to help you get started. But as you saw with the cross stitch, once you um, have mastered the cross stitch, you can then have a look at personalizing your tag. So these have all been designed to work with, let me grab it. It's to this tag here, this um, long rectangle one, um, these letters have all been designed to work with that tag um, obviously you can then stitch it into your canvases um, we've called these initials because they're probably too big to make a word um, unless you have a really big canvas do that is that the way around yeah um, it's really confusing i know it's right very thing. difficult it, it probably is very throws difficult. me off um, so with this, you can um, obviously make them thicker, thinner. We've just given you a starting point, giving you lots of different thicknesses, lots of different shapes, but you could use um, half stitches throughout all this if you wanted to. And you can also use different colors, do two-tone colors, um, outline the edges. And then at the bottom, um, you can also see we've done some numbers. So we've done these a little bit smaller, so then you can fit two numbers onto that tag obviously if you rotate it you can fit three numbers if you use it with the creative canvas you can create dates um, so there's so much that you can do with those should I show the icons and then we can go back over to you now yeah let's do yeah. that um, so these are our icon templates so it's just some really basic shapes which you can start using but it gives you the squares, it gives you the hearts, it gives you the circles. So obviously we've done the face, we've done the little pumpkin for Halloween. But think about how you can change these. So it's a circle, so you could create these into baubles. You could then stitch the circle, the snowflake onto the circle. So as much as all these are images, think about how you can change them to fit your theme, to fit how you want to do it. You've got some pattern backgrounds in there, so you've got the rainbow, you've got the falling sort of like little sparkle stars. And then this at the bottom is something that Natalie made. So you can see how our flower on this side, this is the template, this is how it actually looks. So if when you get this, you can print this off and you can follow it and you will see how well those templates work. For what you would like to do. Another really good thing as well that you've done Stace, which um, might yeah. be a good idea to show here, is we've also got downloadable templates um, that are sort of the, just like the grids of our dies. So this enables you, if you want to get really creative and you want to make your own eye cards, you can draw sort of the, the image that you want to on these templates before you start stitching, which allows for like, it just makes, you're not gonna have any errors, you're not gonna have to stitch half of it and then realize that you've done something wrong because you can draw out um, with just a pen or a pencil, the um, icons that you want to do, you can draw out your own sort of designs um, and that's gonna allow some really sort of, um, it's gonna allow, it's gonna make it a lot less time consuming than if you're gonna do the design on your um, straight onto your dies because you've got that sort of template to have fun, see what you can get up to um, yourself before you do it straight away. 
and we've given you all the templates for all the dies that we have launched today. So you've got this first one um, is the Creative Canvas and that has two on the sheet so you don't have to print multiples. You have the tags and the borders and then you also have the butterfly topper and the heart um, toppers and the little embellishment one as well. So this, as Natalie said, just gets you started. Um, get creative with colours, you're not going to mm. lose anything. Just print it, scribble all over it. These were essential when me and Natalie were doing some of the cards. Um, these are how we did some of our templates. So some of our backgrounds as well. I, th this is where the idea come from. Um, came from even, come from. <laughs> um, I drew the designs first, um, just with markers, felt tips, pencils, whatever you want to do. Um, but it just gives you an idea, it gives you a starting point. It allows you to play with colour as well, so which colours work together without you spending too much time sewing it and then getting halfway through thinking, oh no, I don't like this, and having to unpick it all. It's so frustrating when you get halfway through things and you just think, oh no, it's not really working. Um, so that is amazing. It's very true. Um, sorry, Nat, just before we go to you, yeah. I'll just show you these um, boards. Which, oh yeah, because these, um, these are actual size. These are all being cross-stitched so you can see how big they really are. So these, from the template, um, the template has been printed slightly smaller. Um, so obviously the usual size is um, A4 and it does have the um, the sizes on the template. So I think in the template, the letters are shown at 75%. Um, so it gives you an idea of this is how big the actual templates are once you've so once you've stitched them. So you can see how amazing, how bold they look. Um, and then this is the other alphabet and the little numbers at the bottom. Um, and we had so much fun doing this. Um, me and Natalie took half of the alphabet each, yeah. and I think we probably both could have done the full alphabet. It was so um, much fun. I think I started doing some and sent a picture to Natalie. I was like, I've done mine. I was like, what? And she was like, don't, don't do any more, I want to do them. <laughs> um, so these are our icon templates, so you can see how these look in real life. You've got the um, wonderful rainbow background. You've got the little Santa's hat as well, which I think you're going to use that. I'm going to use so that. Exciting. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll show that in a minute. Okay. So we'll come to you for the demo. Let's do this. Right, so yeah, I'm going to use the icons that um, are on the board because I think it's really useful. You have them there, so why not use them? So we're going to use our creator canvas. So I've put that onto a piece of 5x7 um, plain ink me cardstock. Then I want to create a frame for this. So I've got another piece of 5x7. Um, this is in our craft card. We're just going to use our die to cut um, an aperture here. So I'm doing this at... Um, one inch high can you see it's very zoomed in here one inch high and then so i'm going to the one inch mark on here and then using this guide i have along the edge i'm going to put in my trimmer at four inches and go up to the one inch mark i'm going to turn it meet again at that one inch mark put my trimmer in and we're going to go down to four again because we want this to be a little square so down to four and then we're going to flip it because I don't want to cut the bottom edge because we're going to do something fancy with another one of our great dies so this time we're going to take that to six and I think we'll go down to three on this side and then we've created this little window here now I've got these, um, these are our on the edge sentiment dies. This one is Merry Christmas. So I've already cut out the Merry here, which is gonna layer up underneath. So for this one, we just want to cut out the Christmas. So I'm gonna use my die and I'm just putting it, it just fits in here, just fits. So then once that's in place, we're gonna take that down um, and it will only cut out this bit because we have this edge here. So it might um, it might just 
the best way to do this is to not put as not put the um, metal sheet in when you're cutting this because otherwise it will sort of imprint the other side of your card so let's let's start by cutting our canvas and then we'll remove a sheet and we'll cut that um, aperture out while you're doing that now <coughs> yeah um, I'll just show you this because I'm gonna do some stitching at the same time so this is one of the cards that I made and um, this is just using the inner dots of the heart and that is it no outline no inner center and then just using different colors um, to create that almost like string art now we've had a few questions um, if you're using embroidery thread how many strands would you use for the grid um, it's up to you really isn't it it is entirely up to you so most of our samples have all used um, like the, just the standard single thread and um, the floss that you get so all this is using single thread um, and if I bring it closer you can see that that I would say that that's absolutely fine um, but you can you can double up if you want to you can um, you can split it so you only have like the three thin strands um, but you can get as chunky as you want or as thin as you want and it it doesn't really look odd if that makes any sense so just another question that we've had is um, how do you secure the back so with the card that I'm about to do um, I did start it earlier so we've got some black card and you can just about see if I put some white behind it you can see those dots have cut um, and then I've just started with the yellow but if I show you the back all I've done is tape now I would probably use something um, like glue but with this I've just used double-sided tape secured it on the back and that just allows it to be a little bit a little bit easier um, and then if I, sorry if I show you the back again so I want those colors to be layered so rather than all the yellow at the bottom and then another color and then another color I want them to be all mixed so what I've done is I've done the yellow, done a few strands, and then I've just used um, low tack tape and secured my thread and also my needle, because I've got three different needles um, with the thread on, which means that I'm not gonna lose it because these are quite long strands. Um, and then once I do that, I will then do this, is that this way, ha ha. Um, so I'll just pull that through, pull it through a really random hole. It really doesn't matter because you're going to start building up those colours and just keep going with it. So while I do lots of stitching, let's go to Natalie and see right. what she's up to. Okay, so I've got my pieces together now. So I've cut this beautiful aperture, it's got that Christmas die on there, and then I cut it again, and I've just cut the Mary off because I wanted to layer this up, so that's gonna be the sentiment for my card. And then you can see you've got that canvas here, um, which is gonna fit in um, just beautifully into there. So let's get our guide ready, and we're doing um, our Christmas hat. Um, so the Christmas hat, I've chosen a really dark red and I've actually chosen like a creamy brown colour. Um, it's, it's quite light so you can see it, but it's going to stand off that um, edge. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, seven strands to get across there. So if we start it, how many tall is actually? One, two, three, four, five, six, it's seven tall by seven. So if I put my Merry behind this, like so, because that's where it's gonna sit, then we have, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we start it at the very top, so let's go with red first. So my first stitch is gonna be the center stitch, which is gonna be this one here. So we can just go in through this. We'll just move these out of the way now. And we're gonna follow this 
um, along. So when I've um, been doing this at home, I've been doing sort of like, I've been doing that half cross stitch and then going back over. So I'm just using one strand of embroidery thread here. This would take two, um, but I've decided on using just one for this. Um, so I'm gonna do a row at a time. And we're gonna flick through me and Stacy while we stitch here. Um, but we just wanted to really do this from scratch because when um, I did it on Friday on TV, um, I mean, 45, 42 minutes is a, a very short time to show you everything that you can do with them. So we did have a lot of things that were sort of part done and ready to go, but we wanted to be able to show you in this hour um, sort of how easy and how quick it can be to make these cards. I mean, you don't have to rush them if you don't want to, but if you're making a few of these for say the family, then you do want them to be a little more speedier than they would be um, if you were just doing them at home. So I'm using that sort of technique to do this. The next one is down, starts here, this one, then we're gonna go three, yeah. So this is my center point the whole time. So I'm using that um, when I'm looking at that guide. If you um, didn't want to count all the time, you could sort of mark where the edges would be with a pencil. Um, and then because it's ink me, it's just cardstock, you'll be able to rub out your markings. Um, but it is really, really easy to follow. And it's so much fun. So much fun I spent a whole evening just watching films and um, cross-stitching the other week, making some samples for, for TV. Um, there's a lot of the people on our uh, design team as well aren't necessarily full-on stitches. So when you see the samples that they make, um, it really does prove sort of how easy this is um, to do. Oh, we've got a little bit tangled here. I'll just pull that through that'll I'll come back through again and then we can get back onto it it's really relaxing to do this how are you getting on Stace? Um, really well I'm trying to read comments as well as stitch I know so. it's very difficult isn't uh, it? <laughs> uh, lots of people loving this um, a lot of people saying it would look amazing in glitter thread as well yes um, we've got Quite a few samples using different things so once we've um once we've got a bit further i think with our stitching i'll we'll probably show, show you show some you um, sure. some samples because we're on, obviously only showing you two demos which is live so um obviously the live demos they, they're going to take the time but you can see i mean, i've only done this while talking to natalie and also reading comments but you can see how quickly this is starting to build up with the three different colours. So I've, I've now got the yellow in the bottom, I've then got the orange, and I'm just working with the red. So I'm going to do a few more layers of this, and then I'm going to go back to the yellow in a minute. So you can see I um, secured my other thread um, underneath so it's not going to get tangled. I've already secured all three underneath, and you'll also notice when I so let's do it with this. So I've come out at the back here and rather than picking a, a, a hole all the way over here and having a big long thread in the back, um, choose a hole a few away. So let's go with this one that we've already done. So we can come up through there and we're not actually using, we're not like wasting um, yeah, it's a good, it, when you're doing the string art, I think that's a great way to do it. I did a, a butterfly on um, telly um, and that's the way that I did the um, the back of it was to, to move up and then across just to save um, the thread really. Um, so we've just, I've nearly finished this red section of the hat. Um, I've just got two more to go and then I'm going to move on to 
um, the cream section, which is going to be the bottom of the hat. So you can see how, how easy this is, how quickly it's starting to take shape. So I'm just going to um, finish that off by taking my thread through um, two little sections here. And then if I just po poke that through while we move on to the bottom edge. So the bottom edge is um, one over. So we can do, just make sure that that's reds out of the way so we're not um, going to tangle up with that while we're doing this. So I'm just doing that really quick stitch where I'm going all the way and then I'm going back on myself. Um, it is a lot faster I feel. Oh, it's happened. I'm tangled up. <laughs> As you can see, we're it's not... It's okay, we got really far with this one. On TV it happened in like the first demo. We're not um, stitchers at all, we're paper crafters. So this um, is fairly new to us. We're, we're just a... We just um, like to do everything really, don't we? We do. We do enjoy soft crafts ourselves. We do a lot of different soft crafts. We did, tried, um, I mean, you're a fantastic crocheter. And yeah, you're I, very good at embroidery. I do a lot of crochet. Um, generally, cross stitch just doesn't work for me. It gives me lots of um, headaches and makes my eyes all funny. But this, um, I spent so long sitting and just stitching um, while I was chatting, while I was doing, um, like while I was watching telly, because um, it's so therapeutic and you don't, especially with something like I'm doing now, you don't actually have to count anything. No, you don't have to follow a pattern doing stuff like that, do you? So it's a lot um, for people who aren't sort of like down for counting your stitches, making sure that, you know, you're doing it all. But even if you didn't, even if I went slightly out on this, you really wouldn't be able to tell, and I think that's the beauty of um, cross stitch is that you, unless it, unless it's a very obvious error, you cannot tell. You could make this bigger, you could make the the present wider slightly, um, you could make it taller, you could make the um, butterfly bigger, you could add extra petals on the flower. You can do so much with this. So we've got one. One, one layer of that now. So we're going to go back through. I'm nearly finished with this, Stace. These you're, are really, through. they're really quite simple. These um, icons, which means that using those templates that Stacey's given you, you can design a lot more sort of um, intricate ones. Things that you like to 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 do. You can put. Um, so you could do smaller images. So like the B one, you could do. Lots of little bees instead of lots of uh, instead of the one big bee that we've got there. So I'm on my last row, and then I just need to do um, just one off the top of my hat here. Um, so I've used two different colours here, but you could have done this in green and red and made it into an elf hat. It didn't have to be a Christmas hat, and um, you could have done one. Um, just for just for someone who likes hats, it doesn't have to be a Christmas hat at all. So you can change up the colours that you're doing this with um, to fit any occasion that you like to do. I think this is a great um, a great thing to do and create gifts with. I mean, everyone loves. Um, it's my favourite thing to make things that you can gift to people. Um, so. This is a great one for that because you can get really sort of personal with it and you can personalise it to different people. You can write names on it. That's another thing that um, you can do and what we're going to run through in a short while with you. So my last stitch is just this one up here. So I'm just going to do a single cross stitch and I'm going to get it tangled up here now. So I just pull that through. We did just get um, a top tip as well, red. which is in the stitcher guide. Um, if you're, if you, we go. if you get entangled with your embroidery thread, if you just hold your needle, like let your needle dangle, and it will unwind itself. It does. Um, so yes, thank you. Let me see who sent that. Because uh, we've had lots of comments and um, lots of people 
really liking the dies. Um, let me go back to this. That's through. So I'm just going to finish this off by tying these two pieces together and then we can tape them down. So let's just take that off there. Um, and I'm just going to knot this. Yeah, it was um, so Christine with that, don't that top apart. tip. So thank you for that. Um, lots of people saying that they've got lots of embroidery thread. You um, have loads of it at home. I was surprised at how much I had just knocking around. Um, it's a great, and it's so, you know what, if you don't have any, it's such a cheap thing to, to get hold of. It really is. So let's just use um, this piece of tape here, and that's just going to hold um, my bits down. But I did knot it, so it shouldn't come undone. So we've got our Christmas hat there now. Um, so now we can just build up our card. So we've got our aperture, which we made um, before, for this to go um, on top of, which our hat just fits that perfectly and then we have our merry so if i get some foam pads we can put this together so i'm going to use our one millimeter foam pad so this is just going to lift if i cut this down let's stick this back on this is just going to lift this word slightly um off our page so i'm just going to put one over here and a bit over here because I don't want it to, I don't want you to be able to see the foam pads when we stick it down, which I think I have failed at that already, but no worries. <laughs> we can just peel this back and that is the beauty of this wonderful, of our foam pads is that if you do accidentally just stick it a bit slightly, if you roll it off, it does come off. So let's try that again, shall we? So the best thing to do, let's mark it. Let's get a pencil and I'll just put some little marks there so we know. I know now this is where my phone needs to be. So let's trim this off here and then let's trim some pieces to you. So I've got a piece on here. So this is our one millimeter foam pad. I'm gonna stick the rest with two millimeters, which means that this Merry is just gonna fit perfectly under here. So if I use this now, and I use that as a guide, you can stick that on, and then that is gonna fit just wonderfully. We've had quite a funny comment there. Um, from Linda Daffy. At last, something I, do, I don't need to order. No needles in this house. I turned my husband's trousers up with hunky-dory red tape. No hope for me, never been domesticated. I love what the a... fact that you've, brought, that you've turned his trousers up with red tape. What a good idea, that's so clever. Um, but I have, to, I have to say, I am exactly like you. If I don't, I have avoided sewing all my life, like actual, like, Sewing, sewing. Yeah, proper sewing I'm not um, good at, but fun sewing I can do. But this um, is great, especially if you, I mean, I've, I can't wait until I'm able to see my nieces again because they will love this. Yeah, they it's a great thing to do with the kids it. because it's so easy and, you know, using that guide sort of teaching them a new craft is a fun thing as well. So I'm going to stick this now onto my grid where my little Santa hat is. So let's put that just there and then I might just have to trim the edges because I've not stuck that onto my piece of card very straight but no worries so we can trim these edges off now and then we can stick this straight onto our card blank so it's taking a little bit longer than demos normally do when we're here at um, on our, our hunky dory tv but we wanted to show you um, from start to finish really how you can create um, some really lovely cards. So once I've done this um, we'll show you through some of the cards that the team made because there's some fantastic, fantastic projects that really show off how um, intricate you can get if you want to um, but also how um, quick and simple and how you can mix them as well with other things like your paper craft kits or 
your adorable scoreball. Yeah, because um, Barbara did a really nice card using um, a topper and then just using the border um, along the side of it. And it was really nice, the fact that you could mix and match those two it things. It was lovely, wasn't it? Um, okay. So I've stuck my card down now. Let's make some room over here so you can see. So we've just got that little, little Christmas hat in the middle there with that Merry Christmas on the edge sentiment creating a really nice aperture for your um, cross stitch to go into. But you could do this with the birthday cake and it could say happy birthday with our uh, dies. You can use stamps. Um, you could make this for Valentine's Day. You could do this just to say, how are you thinking of you? There's so many occasions and when you get really into it and you start to do lots of different um, designs and lots of different more intricate things and you're getting a bit crazy um, there's loads absolutely loads of things that you can do so let's have a look at some crazy card models and then we'll go back over to Stacey and see where she's up to um, I just need to get some of these from here because these are also really amazing examples I'm not going very fast because I keep getting distracted it's okay so let's have a look at some of these this is a really beautiful card made by Jane. So she's used that edge there um, on the bottom and done some um, fancy stitching with the um, dies, the little holes that you have included there. I like this one and I love how she's used our um, combo dies with this one. Combo dies work great with this collection. Next up is this beautiful... Um, Christmas tree made by lovely Kelly. Kelly made this one. Aww. So if you watched yesterday when Kelly was doing the um, the show, she loves to craft, so we got her involved with this one. Um, I love this. This is done by Jane again, um, but using um, cutting it out twice and then cutting it across and joining it together. How fantastic is that? And I love the little blanket stitch on the edge there as well. I love a blanket stitch. I do love a blanket stitch. It does look really fantastic. Using those um, edges to create your butterflies. Look at that one. That one's really, really clever. So you've just got a back stitch. You've actually got a running stitch here. A running stitch and each one is a different colour. Then you've got um, some just some crazy stitching. Um, but this is what I mean. You can do whatever you want to. Um, and then that's just been mounted onto some Miri. So if you turn it slightly, you can see the beautiful Miri behind it. If you are getting all crafty for Christmas, how about this one? A little gift box with a reindeer on top. It's so cute. Um, so, so cute. So much fun. Um, you, can, you can just, you can draw these templates out on your template guys, which are free to download off the website. Um, and you can get designing things. Um, Barbara got a little bit in the mood for Halloween with this wonderful Halloween card that she made there with the pumpkin on the top. Um, we've got one here that uses um, ribbon so you can see how different it looks from what Stacy's doing right now um, with her threads to use it, doing exactly the same technique but with some ribbon and I think that looks absolutely fantastic. If you want to get super, super crazy, you can do some fancy stitching and create some wonderful backgrounds by extending your um, canvas die. So this is just putting it on once, moving it down. You can do that. Um, Kat, our amazing Kat, made this fantastic card with that has the fantastic um, cow print on there. I love this. It's so fun, but this is what we're talking about when you can personalise it. You can personalise it to people's preferences, to people's hobbies, to the things that they love. There's so much you can do with this. I love this one that Barbara did. She put this on acetate, but it has um, that heart on there, um, really delicately stitched. Um, and I think, actually, I don't know if I can show you this. I'll have to get really close up on our top camera. Can you see the little beads that she's put on here? So that's another way that you can get really fancy. You can add sort of beads and little um, bits to it, but I love this. Look how fantastic um, the stitching is on there as well. 
so many different examples, different stitches that we haven't necessarily shown you that you can um, find online and get into with that one. Um, this one's great, someone moving into a new house, you can stitch their house for them. I um, I saw this and then for the stitch it guide, I was like, I've got to add the- We happy, added a little person. The little happy time people. So when we get to that page, I will definitely show you the little happy time people. Um, and then if you want to, you can also get super, super crazy. So this is one of the demos that we did on Friday's show. Um, you can watch that back on Creating Craft TV, but creating a really cool sort of shiver on pattern there. And then using the, um, using the butterfly to make a completely different um, look to it because like I say, you've got a lot that are beautifully stitched in different colors, creating some wonderful um, images on your butterflies using different colors, but we've done something totally, totally different with that one. Oh, there's so much to show you, I can't, I can't hold it all in. Okay, we've got some examples of these icons. So we've got a little tag here Perfect for Mother's Day, using the um, outside edge as well to create backs, so you're hiding all of your stitches. We've got uh, a little happy birthday card. This is a totally different cake because we didn't have the icons um, when I made this one, but this one is in our latest magazine, so if you have our anniversary magazine, you've got some fantastic examples inside there as well that you can look at. And then again, creating your own icons. So Jane's made this lovely snowflake um, image. It's beautiful. I love the different colors in this. It's very um, sort of Scandinavian, I feel. I do really like um, it. And then we've got some examples that show you how you can use text and sentiments with your um, words. So this one um, is a wonderful little, um, little bunting. That Rachel's made. She's inked this as well. So as Stacy said, get your inks in, create some different colours. Um, you can definitely do that here. She's made the the words a little bit smaller, um, and she's also sort of done an edge around it. So um, a little bit different than the stitching that we have in the guide, but you can get as creative as you want to. This is another really nice example of some some really funky sort of string art here that Kat's done um, it's, quite modern. Create, it's very modern isn't it and I love the background as well I presume that's our um, this background is for, is our adorable scorable our rose gold and black but what she's done is she's used um, an alcohol marker so she's colored oh. over um, the cream sketching um, to create that really nice background it just all ties together so beautifully that is such a clever idea if you want to get super super crazy We've got some big examples of how you can use your icons and the mini alphabet, which we'll show you um, just shortly, um, to create your sentiments. Because if you're gonna stitch a card, you might as well stitch your sentiment. So there's some really fun ones. Um, a little one that we did on telly on Friday using the um, icon, the B icon, and the words there cheer someone up on a sad day with these fantastic cards. And then finally, another great one. Um, Rachel stitched little Theo's name on. You met Rachel on Monday. How fantastic were Rachel's demos? She did really well. Her demos were amazing. We'll definitely get her back um, this month for you all. Um, but this one is a beautiful, a beautiful card for Theo. How have you got on, Stace? Um, well, this is where I'm up to with the card. So you but can look start, how fantastic that is already. You can start seeing how different it is from my original and how bold that is. Yes, um, I love the so colours you've used. Just carry on with your layering. Um, that's all I've done with this one. And then to finish it off, um, you can either leave it like this or I actually stitched all the way around, um, around the edge just to give it that really nice crisp edge. I added the yellow string down down the edge and then I stamped a sentiment but you could also use one of the sentiments that comes with your dies so I did cut this just to show you guys um so I might finish this later but um I think you definitely that, should that's the um so lovely sentiment so we could we could finish that later um because there's so much more that we need I to know, show you I know I know I um, know and we did we did say this might be 
a longer show than usual. So we're please... not too we're not too far over just yet, though, Steve. No, we're doing all right. So you've seen some card models with the um, fabulous alphabet. So this is our smaller alphabet. So this is the one that you're going to use for personalising, maybe a canvas, maybe a like a canvas print if that yeah. makes sense. So you did one, didn't you? I did. Um, for our lovely Sophie. A little a little crafter. Little um Amory's little crafter in training. Look how gorgeous this is. Absolutely beautiful. So that is with the um the alphabet, the mini numbers and then Natalie, do you wanna explain how you've done the little flowers was that with the french knot um yes so i i struggled with doing this actually i had the idea um so i started off with my circle making sure that that went all the way around and i was like i want to do some flowers here but i want to add a lot of detail i want it to look quite busy um so i did my first three big flowers um and i just i just made up the pattern because i couldn't find anything online that resembled what I wanted to do. So I made that up um, and just went through sort of like a, a large square, creating sort of like the big bit. And then for the middles, um, the little dangly bits there, we've just done some little French knots to, to add some texture, to add a re to add like the, the big sort of bloom that I wanted to create on the on that. But I, I really love it. But this, this is again how you can sort of take um, different examples that we've shown you and um, create your own sort of thing with them. Absolutely, it, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a it's a different way of using these dies as well. Um, so that is your alphabet and numbers. At the bottom you've got the reference to the downloadable templates that I've just, that we showed you earlier, these ones. Um, so you've got that in the guide. And then after that we have three projects for you. So these are three projects that me and Natalie did. Um, and we wanted to give you completely free step-by-step -step, um, instructions about how to make them. So I've already lost your card, Nat. Um, Is it underneath the pile that you've got? This pile? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You're both there. We'll get it. You know I'm not very organised. It's okay. I'm organised in my head. Um, so this card that you saw earlier, this was Natalie's card. and. It's so simple, but so striking as well. And that pattern, we wanted to put it in an easy template form for you. So what we've done is we photographed it. So you've got something to follow. You've got all the, um, everything that you need, including the tape, different colors that we've used. You've got the step-by-step -step instructions about how to actually make the card. And somewhere in the middle here is a step that says, follow the stitching guide below. So what we've done, is that clear if I bring it forward? You can see it. Yeah? Yeah. So this is um, step by step on how to make that pattern. So if you start here, this would be your first colour and it shows you what to use. Then um, those colours are then slightly almost like greyed out. So you can see your next colour, which is the green. And then again with the next colour and then with the other colours as well. And you've got notes along the side so it tells you whether to use um, like all six strands so like one thread or whether to double up your thread um, and it also just gives you some pattern notes as well so that's your third that's your first project and um, Tracy's just said um, it, oh no oh I thought she was asking is that the borders um, but she's actually telling Lynn that she needs to buy the borders. So Lynn, oh. go buy the borders. Go buy the borders. <laughs> okay, so this um, is I a project with the butterfly die. Um, so this is one that I created. So it's using all three of the butterfly dies and then I've used the outside butterfly die as like a base underneath. So I don't know whether you can see that, but there's like two layers, if that makes sense. So it sandwiches all that thread in so even when you look at the side you're not seeing it's all nicely neat packaged inside and then you've got that watercolor background as well so again this project is photographed it's got close-up stitch um, in the center you've got everything that you'll need you've got your step-by-step -step instructions 
and then you've got this guide at the bottom which shows you the colours um, and each wing is the same so obviously once you've done one side you can then just follow it and use it on your other side. The only um, different part about this is in the centre instead of using like, all six strands which is like one thread um, I've doubled this up possibly even gone triple oh. so then you get that really sort of thick stitch but it, it almost looks a little bit 3D it does doesn't like, it like the body would be so that is your second project but we couldn't just give you two we've given you three projects so you've got uh, projects with the border, projects with the, That's the wrong um, cards, Dave. one of the toppers. I know, I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking. I don't know why you put it. It's here. It's because I've got too much on, know, on the desk. So, there's so much around you. Um, I could just see you holding it up and I was like, it's, it's, that's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I need more coffee today. I always need more coffee. So you've got one project with the borders, one project with the butterfly toppers, which obviously you can then apply to the heart toppers. Yep. And then you've got one project with um, like a background. So this looks really striking and may look complicated at first sight, but it's really, really simple to do. Um, so again, you've got that photograph for reference. You've got everything that you need. You've got step-by-step -step instructions about how to make the actual card. And then you've got your guide at the bottom. So we bring that forward. You've got um, colour one, colour two, and colour three. And we've also added some numbers so you can start. Um, it's just a bit easier so you can count along the edges or along the top edges so you know where to start. And I think that's just using the back, back stitch. I think so. Yeah, back stitch. So it's really simple to use. And then obviously the reference at the bottom go to our website there'll be lots more inspiration for you and then finally the final page is just a really nice big page of the card models that you've seen today um, so you have always got this on hand to follow um, you'll see that little image at the bottom that one's the little house that we showed you and then I love the little people so we've added them so you can see how you can mix stamping with this and um, you can create your bunting using ribbon use loads of different colors this this is one of my absolute favorite I love cards that. it's I love very it. very good this was barbara's card where she used i think it was was it a topper deck it or was just, a topper deck yeah using topper deck so it's a little topper deck um which obviously we've all got at least one topper deck definitely um ma match it with your um one of your borders and you've got a really quick but tactile card, yes. like the feeling the texture of it, there's just something nice about it, isn't there? And then get messy with your inks, with your stamping, with your glitter powders, and there's there's so many ideas with this. Um, and it's but, nice to, you know, even though you're doing, um, you're mixing paper crafting with cross stitch all together, it's really nice to then create those backgrounds for your stamps or um, for other dyes to to use with so not only are you mixing two crafts together but you're also you know adding lots of different different things in with it as well and it's um it's a really really lovely um collection it's absolutely brilliant stace i love it i love um tracy's comment a messy craft crafter is a happy crafter i think that was in um that was in connection to your mom actually stacy oh was it is my mom yeah your mom said mom that you're a messy up. crafter she does like to pop up. <laughs> she is funny. Um, I am a messy crafter. I tend to just spread. Um, I always tidy up after myself. Yeah, I did yeah. very well, well yesterday and tidied up. We're both very messy crafters, to um, be honest. I think that's the, that's the best way to be. It is. You know where everything is. It's just in your, in your place. In your messy space. Yeah. Um, and finally, just one more thing to show you. These are the smaller alphabet that's stitched so you can see how they look in real life. And is that everything? I think so, you know. I think we, we didn't do too bad. No, I mean, when we initially talked about this, we had so much to go through that we were like, right, okay, this is probably going to take about two hours. But I think we've done quite well there. So, final reminder, um, go head to the website um, and grab your Stitch It dies. And then a few more final reminders from us. Um, 
on Monday the 19th. I know yesterday, I think we said Friday the 19th. And it's definitely live, Monday. I got really confused. I did not know what day it was. But it is Monday. Monday the 19th of October at 9am. And it is with Natalie with our new Everlasting Memories collection. Um, can we can we have a, a sneak idea of what, what it might be? Um, it's paper craft. Yeah. It's got stamps. It's got dies. Um, it's very, it's very lovely. I can't think of another word. I think it's very lovely. It's just, it's just, it's very British. B British? British? I think I don't so. Know. I don't, I don't know. know. It's just, it's, it's very, Tune in. very lovely. Tune yeah, in on don't Monday. miss it. Um, we're going to add another pro product to the rollover box, because I kept saying projects before. <laughs> I'm going to add another product to the rollover box. And it is our absolutely huge A4 stamp set, Rosy Reflections. Great How stamp set. gorgeous. What? Great stamp set. Oh, I thought I got something wrong then. No. Um, absolutely gorgeous. These are really large floral frames, um, all coloured in the back for you to follow. And that will be going in the rollover box, which is starting to get pretty big. It's getting big. Um, our next Facebook Live will be on Friday, the 16th of October at 10 a.m. And it's Thankcraft It's Friday. I'm very jealous. I love doing the Friday show. I love Thankcraft It's Friday. So that will be with Dan and Natalie. So don't miss out. That's 10 a.m. Um, I think that is everything from us. We will go it and is. have a coffee and stop talking for a change. Uh -huh. um, thank you for choosing uh, Hunky Dory today. Um, we hope to see you on board again soon. And it's a thank you and a goodbye from me and a bye from me. Mm -hmm.